980 though, it's going to be a credit of the 1000. Notice that if I put a credit of 980 and I posted it here, we would show that C still owes us $20 and, and they don't. So we have to take it off for the 9000. That means we need another debit here. And I know it's not an order, I've got the two a debit on top and a debit on the bottom. To me, it makes kind of sense to put it in this order though, because this is the first thing I think about. Is cash affected? The receivable has to go down. The plug is the difference to me. We can calculate it a couple different ways. The plug is the discount. So we could say that the plug is 1000 times 0.02, the, the discount, $20. We could also say, well, it's the 1000 minus the 8. 980 which is $20 that's the plug formula to me so the plug formula in this type of situation could be a negative sum of these four cells meaning what's in these four cells 980 minus the 1000 then flip the sign I don't want a negative 20 I want a positive 20 that's why we hit negative instead of equals that'll give us a positive 20 then if I highlight all these cells it adds up to zero so what's that account going to go to? That account will go to sales discount. We gave a sales discount. Why sales discount? You might be thinking, hey, you know what? We overestimated sales by a thousand when we're only going to get 980. Why don't we reduce sales by that amount? And that would be a reasonable assumption, but we don't usually reduce sales. So we made up another account. It's kind of a contra um, sales account because it's really going to go in the sales area on the on the income statement but it's going to act like an expense meaning it's going to have a debit balance it's going to bring down net income so I'm going to copy that I'm going to paste it one two three okay so let's post this out I'm going to make it a little bit smaller again so we can see it all on one hopefully that's not too small might be too small make it a little bit larger okay I'm going to go up to cash I'm going to double click on it and plus and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and go to this 980 and enter. And there's the cash. We're going to go to accounts receivable right under it. I'm going to double click on it. Go to the end of it and plus. I'm going to point to this credit of 1000 and enter. And then we're going to go to the sales discount, which is down here on N12 equals and point to the 20 and then enter. And that brought net income down by the 20. And we have the receivable went all the way down to zero. We also need to record that in C over here because C no longer owes us. We're going to say equals the 1000. So notice that they owe us nothing anymore, even though they only paid us 980. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And we're going to, in order to do the next couple problems, we want to open up that next blue area so that we're not going to keep going down, down, down. So we can see, remember, we hid some cells. I'm going to unhide cells. So notice it goes A, B, C, D, E, L, and that L doesn't go with the song. So we're going to then highlight these cells and then unhide that. So put your cursor on the cell E so it has a drop down, left click, and then drag over to cell uh, row, column, I should say, L, let go, and then put your cursor on the selected area, right click, go down to unhide. And that'll give us the, the next cells that we have here. Then I'm going to go ahead and hide these cells because I don't need to see these cells. If I have a problem with them, I'll have to go back and unhide them. But I think they're okay right now. So I'm going to put my cursor on the B drop down, left click, scroll over to column F, let go, right click on the selected area and hide those cells. Okay, so maneuvering around the Excel sheet, you can learn a lot to, to maneuver around the Excel sheet can be very helpful to do so. All right, so now let's look at the next section. We're on column G now, where it says 716. We say paid balance due to B company within the discount period. All right, so now we're paying the balance due in the discount period to B company. So uh, if we scroll over here, we can see that we owe B company 6,500. So, and we paid it within the discount period. So if we scroll back over here, we're looking, okay, where did we buy something from B company. That was the first thing. So uh, we had terms 215. So we paid it within the 15 days and we're gonna get a 2% uh, discount on that 6,005. So first thing I usually think of is, uh, is cash affected? In this case it is because we paid off the, the cash. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. 
which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy the cash, going to put it on the bottom in H6, right click, paste it, one, two, three. And now we're going to have to think about, well, how much cash did we pay? So if we scroll over there, if we got a 2% discount, pull off the calculator, and we paid 6500 times 0.02 for 2%, we got a 130 discount minus the original payment of 6500. There we have that. Now, again, if, if you got a discount and you're going through the store and you got, you're got calculating discounts on your phone, then uh, we could do that a little bit easier. With one calculator, we could say, well, the sticker price is 6500 times, and if there's a 2% discount, 100% minus 2% means we're going to pay 0.98%, 98%. So that's another way we can get this uh, 6370. It's probably a little quicker if you're doing those on the fly. So we're going to say this. I'm going to make it a negative to flip the sign of 6500 times 0.9898%, how much we're gonna pay. So there's that amount. And we're paying off then the accounts payable. This amount needs to go down. That's a credit. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. The bad thing is going down because we're paying it off and therefore we're gonna debit it. So I'm gonna right click, paste one, two, three on the debit side. We're not gonna debit it for 6370 though. Because if we did, know what would happen is we'd still be showing that we owe money to B. And we don't owe B any money. We we're completely paying them off. We're getting a discount because we paid within the 15 days. So we're going to debit the full amount of 6500. And then you're going to say, well, the debits don't equal the credits. We're going to need another credit. And what's that credit going to be called? You might think it should be a discount. But that's the sales discount. That's the discount that we give to the people that we sell to. In this case, what really happened, we bought merchandise and we put it on the books for too much. We put it on the books for 6.5, but it really only cost us 6.370. So merchandise really needs to go down. We overbooked it because we got a sale on it. So we need to make it go down. It has a debit balance. How do we make something with a debit balance go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So the credit, the discount's actually going to go to inventory, which can be a little confusing when you're trying to think between who got the discount. So when we when we are purchasing, we got a discount, we're lowering the merchandise inventory. Again, we can calculate it a couple different ways. We could say it's 6500 times 0.02, right? We can also say, well, it's the plug. It's 6500 minus 6370. It's the 130 is the plug. So I'm gonna do it that way. I'm gonna use our plug formula. I'm gonna flip the sign with a negative instead of an equals, S-U-M, and sum up these four cells. So take those cells, sum them up. You would come up with a positive 130, but I want you to flip the sign and make it negative. Why? Because I want a credit so that my debits equal my credits when we add them up like so. Let's post that out and see what happens. We're going to double click on accounts payable. I'm going to go to the end of it. I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to go to the 6.5. I'm going to double click on the cash. And note that some of these cells, obviously, you can't see because we hid them. <laughs> so you got to be a little bit careful. If you delete some of the cells now, make sure to, you, to undo it or whatever. Uh, so that uh, you, Or you're going to have to unhide the cells and post them again. So I'm going to hit plus, and I'm going to go to the 6370 and enter. And then we're going to go to merchandise inventory. Double click on that, go to the end of it. And plus, and we're bringing that down by the 130. And there we have that. Now we also have to record it down here on the payable for B. So I'm going to put it in the debit side. We're going to say equals and we're going to point to the 6.5. We don't owe them anything anymore. So this should go down to zero. We're back in balance represented by the green number down here. All right. So let's see what else happens. On 719 says we sold merchandise to a company terms to 15 uh, I'm assuming that's N60. <laughs> so that means we're going to give them a 2% discount if they pay within 15 days. Otherwise, we give them that gracious 60-day time period on which to pay us. And uh, so therefore, we don't need to know that once again to post this. We need to know that when we pay it off because we're going to assume they're not going to pay within the 15 days and post it at the full price in this time. Is cash affected? Nope. Uh, we, got, we didn't get cash. We got an AR. We got accounts receivable. We got an IOU. Account receivable has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case will be another debit. So I'm going to right click, paste it, one, two, three, and post. Notice there's two amounts here. We're going to have two accounts related to the sales price, two accounts related to the cost, 
So we've got 1800 on the sales price in this case, and we're gonna have to credit something. What's that credit going to be for? Income, revenue, or we call it sales. If we sell merchandise, uh, sales is an income statement account, an income account, a revenue account has a credit balance. It only goes up for the most part. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. All right, so then if we post this out, I'm gonna double click on the receivable. There's a zero in it, but I'm not gonna just delete the zero. I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna to go to the end of it so that we can represent all the numbers that are in there and say plus and point to the receivable here and enter. Then I'm gonna go down to sales in N10, double click and go to the end of it and plus and then point to the receivable here and enter. Now, as, as we're going, we might wanna point that post that over here a now owes us money so we have a, a red number because that doesn't tie out to our receivable here so I'm gonna say that equals the accounts receivable and enter so now it adds up to 1800 1800 we're good now we need to record the second half of this transaction which of course is the cost of the inventory we know that we gave up inventory we know that inventory has a debit balance we know it needs to go down so we're gonna do the opposite thing to it which is a credit I'm going to copy that, skip a line, skip another line because I want it on the bottom. So I'm going to put it in line 13, right click, paste it, one, two, three. I'm going to go to the credit side, J13, negative, and the cost being 1200. We're going to have a debit related to that same amount. So I'm going to make it negative of that number. We could just type it in there. That would be fine. And that's gonna be an expense for the cost of the merchandise that we sold in order to help us generate this revenue called cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is an expense. It has a debit balance like all expenses. Generally only goes up like all expenses. And we're gonna make it go up again by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is a debit. So I'm gonna double click on that and post this out. I'm gonna double click, go to the end of it. Plus, we're gonna po point to the 1002. Once we do, this net income will go down and remember what net income is revenue of five less the expenses is the net income then merchandise income merchandise inventory going to double click over here go to the end of it and plus point to the 1002 and enter puts us back in balance note the effect on net income increase by one eight less the expense of one two balance 600 that's what the bottom line is from that transaction all right so now we're on 721 where it says credit memorandum to a for merchandise that was damaged okay so we're going to send a credit memorandum from a for merchandise that was damaged so a is saying that this merchandise was damaged and we're going to give them uh, the money back if they have paid us but they have not yet paid us in this case. They have money owed to us on account. So therefore, is cash affected? No, what really happens is the receivable, the amount that's owed to us, needs to go down by the damaged goods. So receivables has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna put it on the bottom, and we're saying that the damaged goods were for 300. So I'm going to put a credit, negative, 300. Then we're going to debit something. Now, if they give us it back, maybe we would debit the inventory. But if it's damaged and we're not going to take it back, then we're going to have to debit something else. And once again, you might be saying, well, why don't we debit sales? Because really what happened is we put it into sales and the sales didn't ever really happen because uh, the thing was damaged and we had we didn't get the money. But uh, we don't usually make sales go down, so what we do is we make a contra sales account, which kind of acts like an expense, meaning it has a debit balance, brings net income down, called sales returns and allowances. Why is it a contra sales account? Because when we put it on the uh, income statement, it will be in the revenue section, not the expense section generally, but it acts like an expense for the most part. All right, so there we have that, and we're going to go ahead and post that out. We're going to say this equals in cell N11, point to the 300. That will make this go up, bring net income down. Then we're going to go to the accounts receivable. I'm, I'm going to be in cell N6, double click, go to the end and plus, and point to the receivable of 300. That will bring us back in balance. 
Okay, now we're also gonna have to point that out over here. A is the one that gave the return. So I'm gonna put our cursor in V8 equals 